Keeping your files organized is incredibly important if you're working on larger projects or collaborating with a team. We all get lazy about naming files, and if your computer desktop is anything like mine, you've probably gone through stages where the screen is cluttered with dozens of files with meaningless names like Test 1 or Final 5. So establishing a concise but descriptive naming convention is obviously pretty important as a general computing skill. But in 3D, keeping your files organized can be even more crucial, since Maya automatically assigns very generic names to all of our models and materials. And it's not uncommon for a single scene file to include dozens, if not hundreds, of individual models. Now, our little arcade cabinet model isn't all that complex. And in fact, we're going to merge all of this geometry into a single object in a later video. But in some cases, keeping the mesh separated into many pieces is necessary for animation, texturing, and player interaction purposes. Maya includes a couple different window options which display a list of all the lights, cameras, and models in our scene. The simplest of these is the Outliner, which can be viewed by choosing Windows Outliner or by clicking on the Perspective Outliner Quick Layout button. When I open up my Outliner, you can see the perspective and orthographic cameras listed up top, and then a whole bunch of generically named objects below. At the bottom of the list are some default lighting nodes which are automatically created by Maya with every new scene. We won't worry about these, but we can rename all of our geometry by double-clicking on each name in the outliner and typing in a new name, or by left-clicking on the object name in the attribute editor to enter a new name. I won't force you to watch me rename every element in this scene, but I do encourage you to get into the habit of naming every single piece of geometry you create and trying to establish some kind of consistent naming convention so that things don't get too confusing. For instance, I like to use the L underscore and R underscore prefixes to identify geometry that's on the left or right side of a prop or character. Then, if the scene file gets really complicated, I can search for these objects by entering an object name into the text field at the top of the outliner. I can also make use of the asterisk wildcard symbol, which will list all the objects that include the letters between the asterisk symbols in their names. For example, typing asterisk L underscore asterisk will list all items that include the letters L underscore. Maya also allows us to group multiple objects together so that we can easily manipulate them at the same time. To create a group, just select one or more objects and go to Edit Group or enter Control g on the keyboard. These groupings, also known as hierarchies, are very important to animators, but we can also use them for more basic organizational purposes. For example, it would be nice to have all of these objects grouped together under a single node named Arcade Game. Then, if I needed to move or scale the prop, I would only need to select the group node. Clicking on the plus symbol expands the group listing so that we can see all of the objects within a group and clicking on a minus symbol collapses the group. Subgroups can be created using the same command, so I might expand the arcade game group, then select all of the buttons and hit Control G to create a subgroup named Buttons. Taking advantage of these basic organizational tools will ultimately speed your workflow because it will eliminate confusion. And it will certainly make you more popular with other team members when they need to work with your completed scene files.